Hi, this is The Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about which language you should learn to create apps. Okay, so today I want to answer a question that was left on, uh, it was left today, but it was on an older video. This was left on number, uh, Daily Overpass number two, do uh, games still have a good market? And this is by Mark Saul who said, Great insight. I'm always interested in diving in app development. Problem is I don't have any experience. What language would you recommend to start learning? I'm interested in creating simple app games or utility tools. Now Mark, I'm just going to give you my opinion and everybody has different opinions. So it's, I'm almost like, I was almost like I wasn't sure if I was going to answer this one because I'm sure whatever I say somebody's going to disagree with. So I would ask everybody else if you, uh, to put your opinions in the comments too because they let Mark know because we're all going to have different opinions on stuff. So um, my, I prefer to use JavaScript currently, but we use different languages for, for different things. So, uh, so let's just take a, a lay of the land, the languages that you could learn. And these are the ones that I know about that do, you could do uh, apps with, right? So there may be others that I've just, you know, never used, but so you're looking at uh, Objective-C, Swift, Java, C Sharp, um, JavaScript, Lua. And I don't, I don't think I'm missing any, but if any of you know any other frameworks that use different languages, then, then let me know. I, I don't think anybody's ever done an app framework with Ruby, for example, but I, I could be wrong. Right, so, and it depends on whether or not you want to do apps or utility, uh, or utility apps or games. So, you know, because there's, there's different ways. Like, you could learn just native code. And the nice thing about learning native code is that it's, it's free. Uh, it's the one that the platforms would like you to use. So every time like Android comes out with a new version of some some new feature or whatever on their new uh, operating system or same with iOS, it's always available first in native, right? So so that you could you, you know what's going on. You don't have to pay a lot. And then you also have you know other other frameworks that sit on top of that. So so we're looking at if you want to do like iPhone games or iPhone apps, you could do Objective C or Swift. If you want to do Java, then you could do uh, sorry, if you want to do Android, then you do Java, right? So, and those, so those would be the native ones. So like if you want to do an Android app and you didn't want to pay any money and you just had a bit of time, you could, you know, there's loads of resources out there. You could just download Android Studio, install the, uh, the Android SDKs and just start coding away. If you have a Mac, you can get Xcode and you start doing that on an iPhone. Right now, some people will use other frameworks. Like I prefer, I do some of those, so some of those languages. So like, oh, we'll do a little bit of Java. I do a little bit of Objective C, very little, like, as little Objective C as I can because I'm just, I'm just not that comfortable with it. But I do like using Swift. Uh, the, the problem with those plat, those those native code, those native languages, is that it's really difficult to put those into other uh, other devices. So like, if you wrote an app in Swift for example, or Objective-C, then it would be difficult to put it onto Android. So there's lots of platforms, lots of frameworks that sit on top of that. So you've got, or, you know, you've got Xamarin, which is uh, like C-sharp and .NET, which a lot of people use. And for some reason, every time I mention Xamarin, somebody gets angry with me. I think once I called it like a hybrid, which, you know, they said a hybrid is JavaScript and, and, and native. So this, it's not a hybrid, it's native, right? But my whole thing with a hybrid, I thought, you know, hybrid is like two different technologies hybrid together but so you've got Xamarin which is very cool uh, which you could take you know and you could use uh, like C sharp I think you can use VB.net but I'm not sure uh, to create like one app that that fits both but the the interfaces and the GUIs you'd have to change the interfaces a little bit for both so it looks native to both platforms so if you on iPhone it would look different than it looks on Android so you'd have to code those those size different but you can have the core which is like those libraries and Xamarin. The reason I haven't used it before is because it could be a bit expensive, and you, you know, even though C Sharp was my my as a contractor, that was my main language. But I, I started to move into JavaScript, and I prefer using JavaScript more. Right? You've also got uh, you've also got you know uh, the Cordova based uh, or F Cordova slash PhoneGap based. Uh, framework. So we use the Ionic framework, which is very popular, and I really enjoy using it. The the limitation of that is that you rely, like if you want to use some native functionality, you rely on plugins being available. But to be honest with you, there are plugins everywhere. There's so many that are available and it's not that hard to write them yourself, right? But another limitation of those frameworks is that it's, it, it's not, like it sits inside a web view. So 
it's not like if you write a but if you make a button it's not like an actual button it, what it is is a, it's a web page with a button on it with CSS that makes it look native right which is you could say it's good or bad it depends on your objective my objective is putting up products when I first started development my objective was to find it so okay when I first started out as a developer my objective was to find the the language or the technology that would pay me the most then it became the technology that would impress fellow developers the most and now it's like the technology that I could do the least amount of work and put products out there right so uh, so so that's why I, I like using Ionic I, lo I love using that framework when we do business applications right uh, and then you've also got um, you've got these what these kind of newer ones like uh, that that are JavaScript but they compile into native so you've got uh, you got native script and you got react native and native script is done by Telerik uh, and they you know And I played around with this a little bit and you could you know code everything and then you you run it through a compiler And will compile it into native code so a button is a button It looks a different on, different on Android as it does on on iPhone stuff like that and react native is the one that was I, I, I Don't know if it was created by fate it might have been created by Facebook or recently purchased by Facebook I think it was created by Facebook and uh, and that's pretty cool too. So it's the same thing. It's compiled code, but the core is in JavaScript. So you can use a lot of the same code, and you can actually script it differently for different platforms. So that's something we played around with quite a bit, but haven't actually released anything in those yet. But we're not. That's if you want to do a utility app. But if you want to do a game, now you can use native code to do games. There's a book out there called. Um, uh, creating Android games. I, I forget it was by A Press. It was a huge book. I read through it, and they talked about using native code to to create a game. It's it's really difficult there because you're actually going into the lower levels. So like if you create a game, you actually have the, the way that it works is you have like a game loop. So you know it starts in a loop and it just kind of goes through. And you could code this loop and then through every iteration of the loop based on the frame rate, you can move characters about. And all this kind of stuff, so you, so everything moves like that, and it's it's actually it's actually really fascinating the way it works. I mean, it, I love doing that kind of stuff. But there's also frameworks that you could use that make the job a lot easier. I we use Corona SDK for a lot of stuff, and Corona SDK the the main thing that I don't like about it is it's in Lua, right? And Lua is a language that's it's very easy to learn. So if you want to just if you just want to do games. Corona SDK would be my recommendation. Lua is an easy language to learn, but it's not like a portable language. It's very difficult to take Lua and do another app, like if you did want to do a non-game app with it or something like that. Now, Corona says you can use it for business apps, and we've done that for a couple business apps, and it, it just it was really clunky, and, and I found it to be a really awkward experience. Right? Another thing about I think Corona was just uh, Corona Labs was just acquired recently by. Apple deal. So this I always get because I get the emails because you know I follow everything that Corona does and you know it seems like they're always being acquired. They're like the foster children of app frameworks. They seem to always be acquired by a new company like every six months or something. I don't know if that's good or bad but anyway I, I love that platform. But a lot of people will disagree with that say Corona is the best. They will say it's Unity. If I hadn't gone for Corona I would have gone for Unity. Unity uses C Sharp and JavaScript you can uh, you can code for uh, iPhone and Android. It's a bit more expensive. Like Corona was used to be expensive, and then it was free, and then they started charging for they part started putting a splash screen and charging for the splash screen. I think Unity is the same. Uh, I think you you uh, you get it. You could release it for free, but you have a splash screen. If I let Unity guys, I know there's loads of Unity guys out there. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. So. And Unity, you could do 2D, 3D. You know, if you pick up that skill, then that would be really, really useful, right? Um, and then also you've got uh, Coco's 2DX, which is a very popular one, and that I think is in Objective C or C++, and you could you know code for both platforms. There's also a JavaScript uh, uh, version of it called Coco 2JS, which I've had to play around with, but I never really, you know, I think the docu at the time the documentation was not that good, so it was really, you know, really, really hard to use. So, so, so that's you know where we are. You, there's there's loads of different opportunities. The nice thing is you could you could you know invest nothing but time and and pick up some of this. And it's I, I would like to say that it's not as hard as you might think. And I know that it's difficult because there are so many different technologies out there. You don't know where to go. And a lot of times you have to choose you know, just choose one direction and and go that way. If you go 
I would say if you go native, you can't go wrong, right? Because it's it's native, but then you're limited to one platform, and you know, and it, things could be a little bit more difficult, right? Like when I use Objective C, I always feel to me it feels like I'm running with my shoes tied together, like everything is hard, right? But there's other people who use Objective C, and they're just so used to C++ and everything like that that they're just like, oh, I just love coding in this Objective C. I I don't use those frameworks or whatever. So it's just you know, if if you pick that up. Then, then I think that would be good. So anyway, Mark, get started. Don't, don't keep looking around. Don't research it too much. Get started. Go with it. Go with Android. Android's taken over anyway. Go with native Android and just you know get on with it. Or you know pick up the Ionic framework and start learning with that. It's it's better than you know, rather than learn the language and then start in the code. I always find it's better to start in the code and then figure out what all this stuff means. And then when you go through and read one of those books it all starts to make a bit more sense to you. Anyway, that's just my opinion. And everybody, please let, let uh, Mark know and also let me know what, what you guys think, if there's any languages that I've missed, if there's some that you use that you think are way better. And again, and again, let me just emphasize that it's not about the code, it's about the product, and it's about you know getting it out there and getting people using it. Right? So unless you're going for a job and you, and you want something that will pay you well, then then I guess it is about the code. Anyway, that's it for today. I will talk to you guys tomorrow.